Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Friday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. The first week of free agency is in the books. Uh, the Browns have uh, already made a number of moves. We're going to recap some of those, kind of see where we're at. Uh, you know what they have. I mean, they had a tight end visit, so that's interesting as as far as what that could mean um, for some guys already on the roster and and where they might be going in that direction. But you know, let's just start here, Mary Kay. How would you? I don't know if you want to put a grade on it. Or, or what, but how would you kind of rate Andrew Barry's first week here uh, of free agency? You know, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is like a good solid B is what I would give it, right? I mean, I think they probably in a perfect world would have loved to have ended up with Javon Hargrave. Uh, you know, I think that they got pretty close. They were interested uh, in him for sure. And I know they were in the mix for Draymond as well. Um, and of course, ideally they would have loved to have gotten Jesse Bates. Um, but you know, those things didn't happen. So, but they did, you know, kind of the next best thing in the areas that they really needed to, they got what they needed. Uh, they, they filled some holes in some areas and they got some, you know, some really good players that should be able to come in and help them. Now, of course they didn't get the receiver that I still think they need that speedy, speedy receiver. Uh, but there's still time for that. Ashley, how would you kind of rate or describe Andrew Berry's first week? Yeah, I was also thinking around the B B minus kind of range. Like I think like Mary Kay said, there was a, some bigger names out there, particularly at defensive tackle, but I do think Dalvin Tomlinson fits in kind of well with, what this, you know, defense really needs. Um, it sounds like he was maybe the preferred choice anyway, and he came at a bargain compared to some of the other big names like Deron Payne, who obviously stayed in Washington, and Hargrave. So I think that's interesting. I think for me, the big thing that's still missing is addressing receiver and, and the pieces or piece, big piece that you're missing there. Um, so I think that grade could get bumped up if, say, they're able to get a Michael Hardman, convince him to come here, for example. Um, so I think there's still room to grow. So I'm going to give them a solid B minus, which for me, a perfectionist is, you know, a hard, hard grade to stomach. Let's see, I love I love a good B minus. I'll take a B minus every day of the week. That's great. <laughs> that's that's perfect. Um, all right. Mary Kay, actually, I want to I want to pivot here real quick because Ashley mentioned a name, Nicole Hardman, and you actually in your when you talked to Juan Thornhill on Thursday, it was the day that he tweeted at me, Cole Hardman, about how they both came into the league together, did a little bit of recruiting. Uh, I think I saw Tyreek Hill was doing a little bit of recruiting of him, too, so it made a joke about him not returning his calls. Um, what what kind of vibe did you get? I mean, what did Juan have to say about that to you? Um, I'm just curious what kind of vibe you got when you brought that up to him. Well, he did say, uh, even though he was just kind of messing around on Twitter with it, uh, he did tell me that he would love to have him here. And we saw that Miko, uh, respli- you know, replied to his tweet with the eyeball emoji. Uh, so I'm sure it's something that they've talked about or thought about. I mean, look, there's a job opening here for a speedy receiver, and there aren't many that are faster uh, than Miko Hardman. So, um, you know, I think it's definitely something to – think about i'm sure i know he's on their radar and has been uh whether or not it will happen i don't know about that of course money is always an issue but i definitely think it's something to keep an eye on okay so i I, just to go back to the original question i would say that i I feel like this was a very on-brand free agency so far for andrew barry it was just identifying needs filling them we'll see how they work out on paper they seem pretty solid um and he put himself in a position where he doesn't have to rely on the draft necessarily to find that edge rusher or find that defensive tackle. He can use the draft for what they want to use it for. We talked about that a little bit on the Hey MK podcast earlier this week, that um, he doesn't want to put himself in a position where the draft is just to fill needs. He, he wants to add young players that they can develop. So let, let's kind of go through these guys a little more.